All right, the next reading is from Daniel chapter 3. So Daniel chapter 3 um, happens a little bit after um, the situation in Jeremiah, but with the same kind of groups of people. So remember back from Jeremiah, there was an army to the north, Babylon, and their leader, Nebuchadnezzar, um, was going to come and destroy Israel. Well, here's the thing. Israel did not repent, so God allowed Babylon to come and destroy um, the nation of Israel. All of the healthy, um, aristocratic, royal people um, he that he didn't kill, uh, he takes back with him to Babylon, and he's going to do this kind of assimilation thing, kind of create, um, he's going to destroy their identity as Israelites, and he's going to make them be Babylonian. Um, so uh, there are four guys specifically in the book of Daniel that we hear about. He goes so far as to change their names. Um, so we know three of them by their Babylonian names um, and not even their Isra Israelite names. Um, we know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How would you like to be called Abednego? Um, we know the other guy by uh, his Hebrew name, and that's Daniel. So Daniel and these three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or if you've watched Veggie Tales, Shadrach and Benny, um, are taken back and they're kind of inscripted into Nebuchadnezzar's army. Um, and they really stand their ground. All the other Israelites kind of go, okay, well, they're feeding us this and they're allowing us to drink this and they're asking us to do this. And so we're just going to do it. Well, Daniel and his friends don't. Um, they actually ask for permission, like, can we eat our um, our own diet? Can we um, do uh, all this? And it actually shows that they are um, stronger at the end of um, the training time than some of the other guys who had been eating what the Babylonians had given them. Um, and Daniel himself has this um, kind of cool gift from God in that he can interpret dreams. So he quickly becomes a high up guy in um in the Babylonian court, in Nebuchadnezzar's court. The other three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we don't necessarily get to see where they end up, but we do know that they are taken care of. Um, Nebuchadnezzar comes up with this weird idea. Um, and in chapter three, this is when this idea kind of comes to fruition. So he decides to make this statue of himself, this large statue that like people can see. Um, from uh, uh, from a good ways around. And he says that um, he's going to bring everybody into the statue um, and at uh, whenever they blow the horns, that everybody has to bow down to the statue in allegiance to Nebuchadnezzar. Um, now, this is, a, this is an issue um, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because they've already... Um, stated that they're not going to worship idols. They're going to they're gonna follow the Lord. Um, and so they cannot bow down to the statue. Um, so Nebuchadnezzar says, all right, if you're going to, you're, we're going to come, we're going to blow the horn, um, bow down to the statue. And if you don't, you're going to be thrown into a fire. Um, okay. So the, everybody comes in, they're gathered around, the horn blows. And now imagine this, okay? Like the entire city um, is bowing down and there are three guys who are standing up. Like, it's not like you could hide. OK, they made a bold decision to say, you know what, we're literally going to stand for the Lord. We're not going to bow down regardless of where it goes with us. Um, and it uh, so Nebuchadnezzar is furious with them and takes them and he um, throws them into this uh, fire in a fiery furnace, um, as some people have said. So it's like kind of like a big room um, that's just lit on fire. OK, so he throws them in there. What do you think is going to happen to these three guys? Well, they should die, right? And they should die pretty quickly. Um, the problem is, is that Nebuchadnezzar and his men um, see them walking around. But they don't just see the three of them. They see this fourth um, person walking around with them. And they say that it looks like the Son of God um, is in there with him. And it's so cool to think that, like, not only do they survive the fire, um, but that God was with them while they were walking around in this furnace. And so Nebuchadnezzar's like, well, it's not hot enough, so light it hotter. Um, so he has people like light it um, seven times hotter than it was, right? Um, they still don't die. Um, and they're still just as fine as they would be um, on a regular day in a regular place, right? Nebuchadnezzar's like, well, something's wrong with the fire. So he actually goes up to it and he's burned a little bit um, by how close he gets to it. So it's not like the fire isn't hot. So eventually he realizes that they've been spared by their God and uh, he kind of has a moment where he turns just for a moment. It doesn't last very long with Nebuchadnezzar. 
Um, but where he realizes that like the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel is the one true God. Um, and that he is, uh, that the God has spared those three people. And so he actually pulls them out of the furnace. Um, some really cool things that we can learn from that is that, first of all, God did not abandon them at any point. Um, God did not abandon them uh, when they were standing for him. God did not abandon them um, in the midst of the fire, like he stood with them. Um, and that's such a cool thing to think about. And then uh, also, it took a lot of boldness, right? Like they didn't just try to hide and do the right thing. They had to do the right thing in public when literally everybody else was not. Um, and that is a lesson that we can kind of pull from this too, to say, I'm going to do the right thing, even if nobody else is. Um, and even if it costs me a lot, I'm going to do the right thing. And that's Daniel 3.